Please. Oh, thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, let me begin by thanking colleagues from University of Leipzig for inviting us, especially me from Georgia and my colleagues from Armenia. So, um, it's a great honor for us to take the floor in one for all the European Center for Classical Philology and today for Digital Philology. And let me now apologize for my English, which is not my first European language. In my generation, German was the um, compulsory language for the study of humanity in general and also for, especially for classical philology. I studied it and philosophy, but I hope it will not impede our communication. So today we'll, um, I will present three projects from the field of linguistics and digital humanities developed at the Institute of Linguistic Studies of the Ilya State University, PVC, during 2010-2016. Uh, one important mission of our institute is to adopt and promote up-to-date standards of linguistics and uh, digital humanities both in the research and teaching process. This is why our research projects are aimed at documenting at, uh, cultural heritage properties uh, um, preserved or discovered in Georgia. Apart from Georgian, there is also Urartian, Cuneiform, Jewish, Greek, Aramaic, Arabic, Persian, Albanian, Armenian epigraphic materials, and Greek, Jewish, Armenian, Arab, Arabic. Um, Persian um, and Albanian manuscript too. The first project presented here is the epigraphic corpus of Georgia, is, you see here, Epigraphy Ilia Unia Duji. Inscriptions found in Georgia differ in terms of type, contents and language. From among these inscription um, range, perhaps the most compelling examples are the inscriptions in Aramaic, Old Greek and Jewish, dating from the uh, 5th BC to the 19th AD. None of them has been published online according to the EPIDOC guidelines. The project has been in progress since 2015, the first electronic publication of the Bili um, Armazi Bilingual, uh, it's a Greek and um, Aramaic, Armazi Bilingual, um, here, this one here, was published in 2000, was prepared in 2013 uh, by Tamar Alkitashvili within the framework of her MA research. The critical edition you can see here is on the Georgian, uh, so it's a critical edition of her made by Georgi Zeretelli, and he published um, um, Aramaic text uh, with Aleph Bet in Greek, part of diplomatic edition. He prepared uh, um, special scripts for, for Aramaic, uh, Armazi Aramaic, it is quite different. And this one is um, our XML storage. In English, we prepared English and Georgian XML, and the photo documentation I will show you later. At this stage, epigraphic corpus includes Georgian, Aramaic, and Greek inscription dating from the period between the 1st and 9th centuries AD. This is a long-term project in addition to Georgian, Aramaic, and Greek. It also aims at, uh, at preparing the publication of the corpora of the Urartian, um, Armenian, Jewish, Arabic, Persian, and uh, Albanian inscription according to the above mentioned standard. Markup of the text and linked data you can see here. All metadata data, data is, um, um, and texts are marked up in XML according to the EPIDOC guidelines. HTTP URIs are used in the object type and material description, place name description, and description of photos. The high-resolution photo documentation, documentation has been produced for this edition extra and can be found in the diplomatic and critical edition of the listed inscription. Photos were taken in the lapidary repository of the Georgia National Museum and at archaeological sites. We will be sharing English XMLs with other databases such as 
uh, trismegistus, for example. You, you can see here la under the languages with non from Georgian and Armenian and Albanian um, inscriptions are shared by this page. And about the Georgian, you can see um, trismegistus only has the literary text to date in AD 800 in Asuntaru script. The early inscriptions are currently missing, but we hope to aid them in cooperation with the project. Epigraphic Corpus of Georgia linked our um, poster on, in Rome 2016. Um, from 2017, we have been preparing a new project on documenting and digital publishing of the cuneiform inscriptions of Georgia, published by Georgi Melikishvili, who is also the author of Grammar of Urartian. Uh, they appeared in the German translations in 1971. Approximately 200 inscriptions written in the Urartian language, which adopted and modified the cuneiform script, have been discovered in the present day, to the present day. 22 of them are part of the cuneiform collection kept in the Georgia National Museum. And this makes it the second largest collection of the Urartian cuneiform after that of the History Museum of Yerevan, History Museum of Armenia. Georgian collection has been inherited from the Caucasus Museum founded in Tbilisi in 867 by German scientist and traveler Gustav Rade. In order to reconstruct this shared cultural lawyer according to the standards of digital humanities, its documentation and research should be the subject of joint efforts of the countries of the Black Sea, the Lithuan, the Caucasus region, and Europe. Now we plan to seek international funding for the regional pro project of standards uh, of on standards digital publishing of the cuneiform inscriptions found in the Black Sea region. Um, Armenia, Turkey, and Georgia. We hope that colleagues from the universities with interdisciplinary background working on the area of digital humanities and oriental studies or classical theology will take interest in collaboration as it happened in the case of uh, CDLI, you know, this, uh, of the University of California, Los Angeles University of Oxford, and Max Planck Institute of Berlin. So let me now, but it's still in progress. So let me now show some details of corpus, of epigraphic corpus of Georgia. It's the Georgian and English website. It's a home page, uh, the research group. I'm lead, uh, I'm head of projects, um, but most, most important person for this project is uh, project coordinator, project manager, my best PhD student, Tamak Alhikashvili. Um, so it's a um, Leiden convention. We translated it also in Georgian because it's important for our colleagues. colleagues. Um, so it's an introduction about, about the epitope and eagle and so on. And this one is a here inscription, table of contexts. You can <coughs> search by filter, by place, by date, by text category, by monument type, and my numbering. Um, so, um, I'll show one example, the inscription of Vespasianus, Chisa. So it's our lexicon, and uh, it's um, shared with um, eagle controlled lexicon tool. Some example object type, object type, with um, material to. Um, it's the clear description of the monument and the critical edition of text, uh, diplomatic edition of text, and Georgian and English externals. 
it usually is a translation, critical apparatus comments by, made by the editors on bibliography also in the, the high resolution uh, uh, photo documentations. Um, indicates so index for free quotes. Um, Georgian and Aramaic words. It's, can you see the Georgian word? It's still done. Uh, so, um, it's uh, the search with text by text category, place, date, word, landmass, Georgian, Greek, and so on. It's a uh, Google map marked all the um, places that uh, you can go then and after what uh, you can go to the field inscriptions. Um, so as I mentioned above, it's only our fifth step in the law in this long term project. Uh, of epigraphic corpus of Georgia. Now we are planning to prepare next project for documenting of Greek papyri preserved um, in the center of uh, national in the national center of manuscripts BC and published by Grigol Zeretelli in the 20th of 12th century, 20th century and uh, translated in uh, appeared in German translation in 1966-1971. It's a papyri Russisch und Georgischen Sammlungen, literarische Texte, Ptolemaische Texte, Ptolemaische Texte. And the next, uh, next one is the um, Ptolemaic and Frührömische Texte. And the third one is the Spätrömische and Frühbyzantinische Texte. So, the next project I will present is the next project is the Georgian language. The Georgian language corpus. Uh, <clears throat> At present, it contains over 130 million words and has two main sections monolingual and bilingual. Um, the monolingual section um, consists of new and modern Georgian corpus and all the middle Georgian corpus. The new and modern Georgian corpus is the biggest part of our popular project. At present, it contains 3,158 fiction, non-fiction texts, <coughs> books and periodicals, scholarly science journals and popular magazines. It, uh, it is possible to select the sub-corpus, the sub-corpus selection. Um, <coughs> Mm. According to the type, genre, topic, publisher, place of publication, the author's name, surname, title, the name, name, surname of the author, copier and compiler of the manuscript, the title of the manuscript, the date of publication and the date of origin. There is a finite state morphological analyzer and generator of new and modern Georgian language integrated for it. It's made um, according to the um, Bessian Katunan um, methodology for agglutinated languages and trees. I can maybe show some examples of them. Where it is? Um, and it's possible to search by exact form or by grammatical search because Georgia has a quite difficult morphology and it's not easy to find exact form. Um, I can put now to some words, some examples. Da, some examples, and go to the search. One hundred fifty one thousand six hundred fourteen, so about what this star has found, and um, I can look again. And it came the information it says the grammatical homonym is done, it's a um, connection or the other way, and it's a uh, 
um, contents of text. And this one here is just all the uh, preserved meta information about the text. So, as I mentioned, Georgian has a quite difficult morphology, and so our um, finite, uh, finite state morphological analyzer is uh, built on the uh, lexicon uh, and on the roots. Part of speech, uh, noun, pronoun, and so on, you can see here uh, the name changes, sensitivity, uh, voice, aspect. Personalist is the largest list of personalists in Georgia. Some studies, it's special for Georgian web, peasants in the culture, in critics and artworks. Um, so now I will speak about the old middle Georgian. So, <clears throat> all the middle Georgian culture. The old and middle Georgian corpus um, on its part contains translation corpora structured according to the translation schools. It is chronological and stylistic principle. Still, it does pre atonite 5th century and atonite period, 10th, 11th centuries. Um, the, so, the bilingual section includes. Um, The bilingual section here includes the translations from Georgian into foreign languages. Um, so far, it consists of the Georgian English parallel corpus of Webkus Ausani, knife um, in the personal skin, the 12th century poem composed by the greatest of the Georgian poet Shotaru Savali, with all Georgian manuscripts and editions. You can see here the all Georgian um, editions, printed editions, and also the all Georgian manuscripts. So you can see some manuscripts together with all um, damaged texts and so on. It says 118 manuscripts and with two English translations made by Marjorie Wardrop and Venera Ushatze. So, so it's um, scientific literature here. Uh, scientific literature, uh, bibliography, and the postscript, um, because this postscript wasn't published uh, until today, it was one, um, one postscript. This um, manuscript, Atrujashi Sesaritskaya Armini, Bratskin, Gruzinska Munaro, from Armenian, Soviet Armenian Republic to Georgian Republic. And um, um, visual heritage, it's uh, the miniatures. We have uh, 15 uh, manuscripts with miniatures, and one page from each man, uh, the manuscript. It's bindings and colors and calligraphy. One page from each manuscript. Copyrights has um, uh, instituted for um, Georgian uh, for manuscripts, uh, Georgian National Institute for Manuscripts. Um, our next project in this bilingual section is the all, um, oh, sorry, and the second project is a Georgian, uh, all Georgian, all the mean parallel corpus of Kartli uh, Tsoreba. It is Georgian chronics uh, written in, in 11th century and um, you know, translated into Armenian in 12th century. Um, all Georgian uh, uh, manuscripts and, um, and uh, um, editions are documented in the same way. They have this is a Nushuri shrift. You can um, make it into. Um, head really if you cannot write it. And 
this um, meta, uh, the meta notation of um, text here. That's only in Georgian. There's uh, all the inscriptions with the deepest art. Sometimes the uh, meta notation style is large as the uh, manuscript itself. And also, as I mentioned, one page from manuscript. So it's And it's an English, uh, Georgian, Armenian parallel text. So, it's an old Georgian text here, in uh, Armenian translation from 12th century, and new Georgian translation made by Ilya Bulaze. Um, our next project in this bilingual section is the old Georgian Armenian bilingual corpus of the Martyrdom of, of Holy Queen Shushani. It is the earliest translations from Georgian into a foreign language dating from the 7th century, and it will be soon complete. Um, it's about the Georgian Armenian parallel corpus of Kartlis Hobreba. Uh, we are now trying to obtain copyright for the publication of the English translation by Robert Thompson, published by Oxford University Press. And this part of the project will soon be complex. Uh, we will have so all Georgian, all Armenian, with English, modern English translation of both texts, all Georgian and all of old Armenian. And maybe in the next one, um, our idea is to make with University Halle together with Professor uh, Cornelia Hall, who published um, a Syriac text of um, Vita of uh, Peter the, the Iberian, Georgian monastery, all Georgian Syriac uh, parallel copies of this text. Who's the GLC? So I, I can maybe show it up in here. Search maybe it's a local search for the global search. If we have answer, answer is the second floor with not all inscriptions. You can keep it in the all as it were found. As you know, in, the, in this corpus of parallel corpus of Cactus Horror, there is about 3 million words. And um, it's found 4,293 words, um, 293 pages, and you can uh, <coughs> select subcorpus and structure here according to your um, interest too. Um, those um, GLC is divided into the monolingual corpora consisting of the original Georgian literature and translations into Georgian on the one hand, and the bilingual corpora with translations from Georgian into foreign languages on the other hand. The rich textual legacy of the Georgian language is presented not only from the perspective of historical grammar, old, middle, new, and modern Georgian, but also. Uh, from the perspective of relations of Georgian with other languages and cultures. Now I will briefly explain why we find the least corpus structure optimal for the documentation and presentation of the Georgian linguistic heritage. First of all, because it reflects the historical development principle of literary or standard languages of the Christian East, including Georgian, and because it can best present the principal values of the Georgian literature of that period, the diversity and openness. Maybe, um, but I mean, um, you can see it here. Um, <coughs> Almost from the beginning, it means from the 5th century, Georgians had many cultural suppliers. They translated from Greek, it's a Greek Georgian, the first one, um, from Christian Arabic, Armenian, yeah, 
We wanted to reflect this part of historical development in the GLC. The sections are presented separately to facilitate the study of the lexical or grammatical regularities introduced into Georgian from the each language mentioned. The filters in a enable content search of the translations limited to either one particular source language or to a particular period, but expanded in terms of source language. So I can see And it's our search system. You can uh, mark all the manuscript or each subcorpus. So, uh, old Greek, old Georgian, Arabic Georgian, Syriac Georgian, and Armenian Georgian. Uh, and the so next sub project is the prosopographic database of 20th century Georgian. So, the prosopography, G. Um, PDG has been founded by the Institute of Linguistic Studies to create a resource for scholars, students, and those interested in the 20th century Georgia and Soviet history. The objective of the peer project has been to compile the prosopographical data set for the pre Soviet and Soviet Georgia that is as comprehensive and accessible as possible given the relevant resources. Priority has therefore been afforded to achieving the greatest uh, possible range and depth of coverage of the available primary sources and to making the data as accessible as possible in the way it is presented and structured through the web interface. During these first two years of the project, the PDG has focused more on the compilation and presentation of data than of the prosopographical analysis and interpretation. A few words about the structure of data sets. Um, each source is discovered by source name, so um, by source name, um, Source type, date, volume, issue, number of pages, page, place of publication, language, authority, cipher, comment, link. A link if document is described on the web page of the authorities listed above. Factoids. Each, <coughs> each session by a source about one or more persons is referred to as a factoid. Key types of personal information, authorship, education, events, occupation, office, personal relationship, personal information, procession, uh, person A was owner of a particular object, and so on. The project is still, as I know, um, mentioned about the project is still in progress. We plan to integrate into PDG social network analyzer. You see, that is our fifth step, and it's German said, Alle Anfang ist schwer für uns. Thank you very much. For your time. It's a lot of work. I was looking at it this morning and I wasn't able to, I, I could see sort of what was in it, and still trying to understand what the contents are. And having a presentation really clarifies that. And I think one of the things that I think is a major thread is that some of the same problems we face dealing with ancient languages are problems we face dealing with languages that we don't know that of modern languages that we do not have. We're dealing with a writing system that we cannot read. We're dealing with a language system that we do not know. Uh, and so we need environments so that people from many who speak many different languages can get it, as you know, I mean, this, I'm just going to know this is your priority. How do we help make Georgian not only old but modern as accessible to as many people as possible? How do we how do we get into those epics, those poems where you have bilingual editions? How do we get people reading them and thinking about them? Uh, 
I mean, this is this is a huge subject. I will say that in, in, in the United States, you would think that old French, the Chanson de Roland, would be significant. But when the Modern Language Association did a survey of what languages people were learning, they found 18,000 people learning ancient Greek, and when they asked for old French, or old, you know, they got 12. <laughs> Well, one, two. When they asked for Middle High German, uh, they got 13. Uh, and of course, my German friends said, well, we still beat the French anyway. Uh, <laughs> but you've got this a thousand times as many people as in the ancient Greek as studying these early forms of modern European languages. So getting early languages, early epics yeah. out there, not just for Georgian, mm -hmm. but also for all languages. So this is, and they all, you know, you think you're working with corpus linguistics, all the categories are the same, social network analysis, yeah. topography. It's the same problems. How do we bring things together so we're somehow our work is reinforcing mm -hmm. each other and we're all helping each other? Standards. Other questions? So let's finally try to make our connections with other data systems. It's thrilling, and I, I, I sympathize with the fight with copyright. You have to try and get uh, things out of the hand, so, um, um, especially the fridge. But, okay, questions? <laughs>